what's happening? Snow in London? Bolts from the blue? The weather is going mad. Boss, wake up! Oh, my head! What hit me? Hmm, who's there at this time in the morning? Morning? Come on, boss, wake up! Huh? What? Who's there? Oh, he fell asleep! Oh, my head! Uh, do you have a headache too, boss? My head's pounding! What's happening? We fell asleep, boss! I think somebody played a trick on us! Simon, look outside. Oh, I can't stand up. Damn them. They're leaving. But who's there with them? Quick, the mechanism. Destroy them. Destroy them. I still feel foggy. Here we go. I push this and I kill them. What's happening? I don't know, boss. What's that sound? Who knows? But the mechanism didn't work. They're escaping. Something's gone wrong here. I don't like it at all. Let me see what you pushed, animal. I pushed this little button, boss. Idiot. Look at the gyroscope. The mechanism was pointed towards us, towards Atlantis. Atlantis is going to explode. Get out, quick, quick. What's a gyroscope? Uh, gee, boss, uh, it's true. What are we going to do now? I'm leaving. You stay here. Uh, but why, boss? Don't leave me. I didn't mean to do it. A simple chimp. You stay here to be disintegrated, along with this damned place. everything. You put an end to my dream of power with your idiot hands. I'm so sorry, boss. Let's get out, quick. We're safe. We did it. Right. But what a pity about Atlantis. It's gone forever. And who knows what horrible end Blower and Simon had. I'm actually sorry for them. Come on, Professor. This stuff happens. How about me? Look at my hair. I haven't had a decent shower in weeks. Why don't you shut that stupid mouth and get a grip? How rude. I think you two are a perfect match. I'd rather go back down and stay there. No doubt about it. You match perfectly. Is this the happy ending they promised me? I protest. Oh! Did you see, boys? I was good to find this underground passage. Shut up, idiot! Chimp! You destroyed everything! Everything! Boy, 
Wash, please! I didn't mean to! Shut up and walk, idiot! Who knows if we'll ever manage to get out of this damned hole! I'm so sorry, boss! And quit calling me boss, idiot! Okay, okay, but don't you forgive me, boss? Oh, I give up! happened to you? Let me help you. Ooh, my head. We are doomed. The sacred amaret. Ooh, he took the sacred amaret. Sacrilege. The year is 1997, and under the heat of the July sun, the waves of the Atlantic Ocean lap against an oceanographic trawler, the Ocean Wrestler, currently several hundred miles east from the Bermuda Triangle and alone on the horizon. On the weather deck stand four searchers, the sea breeze filling their lungs as they pose for a photo. Behind them, a specially constructed, toughened submersible designed to operate under severe and abnormal conditions, ideal for their purposes. Standing proud in his boots is Greg Blower, the financial backing behind this historic adventure, the sweat congealing on his brow as he suffers the infernal heat. Behind Mr. Blower is Simon Creek, officially Mr. Blower's bodyguard, unofficially the good-for-nothing nephew. Then, the enigmatic Helen Milton with her alert scientific mind, educated in the top colleges in the country. Finally, Professor Caldwell, world-renowned archaeologist, considered to be a fruitcake on the hunt of a lost cause by many in the archaeological community, but in his heart and mind, he knows the many clues and legends he has followed will prove true in the end. The four enter and seal the only exit to the submersible. The tension in the air is thick, and as the professor checks the oxygen pressure levels, the winch is started up and the submersible is slowly lowered into the deep, murky Atlantic Ocean. The search for a mystery, hidden by the sands of time, has begun. This is the search for Atlantis. Atlantis, a myth known around the world as the city which was sunken by an angry god. Many have searched for it and failed. The lost city has hidden itself well from the prying eyes of the world. As the submersible descends fathom after fathom, Helen watches the instruments act quirkily. It started with a twitch here and there, then some unbelievable readings. Looking at his chronometer, the professor smiles to himself. A quick warning about an abnormal magnetic field puts Helen's mind at rest, but agitates Mr. Blower and confuses Simon. It happened so slowly they almost didn't notice. At first it was just a little dim and warm. Then as the sleek yellow submersible continued into the magnetic field, it got brighter and brighter and warmer and warmer. 
Then Simon noticed a fish, a big fish, a glowing fish. He pointed it out to the professor who smiled and said it was a prophetic dolphin, reciting a passage written by Christopher Columbus who spoke of mystic glowing creatures making ethereal noises and guiding them through dangerous waters. It took just a second for the professor to decide the path they should take. And as the dolphin began to swim further into the murkiness, the professor told Helen to use the dolphin as their guide. This drew more than a raised eyebrow from Mr. Blower, who was expecting a well-choreographed scientific mission. He wasn't expecting this. Guiding the submersible through the silence of the seabed, leading them right to the center of the magnetic field, Helen watched the radar as many other curious dolphins began to surround them. Helen smelt the burning electronics of the guidance console and knew they were going to crash. The submersible shook violently as it made contact. Everybody was thrown from their seats onto hard, unforgiving surfaces. In the dim light from outside, Mr. Blower searched for his cigar lighter, constantly muttering insults at the professor. A hull-ripping creak shuddered through the small craft as it finally came to rest. Simon found Mr. Blower in the darkness and helped him to his feet. Meanwhile, the professor was both thanking and praying to the gods. Helen piped up with a status report, her fingers trying the dead controls to no avail. Most of the electrics were gone and the hull was taking on water. Then the professor suggested she should try the outside lights as they had their own power supply. There it was, the professor's holy grail and Mr. Blower's unique business opportunity. Atlantis. In London, several days later, and in the middle of a snowstorm, a newspaper editor waits. I don't know. I think a tire exploded. Oh no! You stay here! I'll go and replace it! And then I'll be right back! Luckily, I've got a jeep full of tires! Oh, used to, of course! Wonder! 